Okay, so this is the third installment of Unit 4. This is on uh, solution stoichiometry. Here we're going to look at the concentrations of solutes and solution, and then we're going to look at how to perform stoichiometric calculations for solution concentrations. It's very similar to what we did in Unit 3. It's just that we're adding um, one different step potentially to our uh, mole concept map. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to first look at concentration values. Now technically guys, molarity is the one that we end up using the most for 111. These three you'll see a little bit, but you'll use a lot more in chemistry 112. And then the parts per million I think is essentially the most important unit for everybody because it's got the most real world application to it. From there we're going to go to dilutions and we're going to focus on um, how to do solution stoichiometry. Now it's important to remember that solutions are just homogeneous mixtures. They have a solute and that is the substance that is there in the smaller amount. It is what is dissolved. Usually that is going to be sugar or salt or acid, something in the solution. The solvent is something that is present in the larger amount. It is going to be uh, the thing doing the dissolving or the solubilizing, I guess. Um, that it for us is almost always going to be water. And then in terms of concentration, we really want to know not only what is present in solution, but really how much is there. And so we're going to give concentration values in terms of the amount of solute that is dissolved. And so that gives uh, some term related to solutes. So molarity, which is represented by a capital M, is going to be the moles of solute that is dissolved per liter of solvent. Um, or solu Actually, this is a typo. That's what happens when I copy. Uh, per liter of solution. This is what I was talking about. Um, so here we have molality. Molality is given by the lowercase letter, letter m, and it's going to have units of moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Um, now, even though molarity is the unit that we're going to use the most, molality is technically more accurate and more reliable. And the reason for that is because um, if you think back to lab two, where you have that density lab, there's that whole table um, where you have um, the density of water that changes with temperature. And density is just grams per liter or grams per milliliter, depending. And so what you saw is that because density changes, with temperature, and it may only be a little bit, but it still changes. It means essentially the volume changes um, with temperature. And so while molarity is a temperature dependent unit, molality is not. It is um, going to be the same regardless of temperature, and it's going to be honestly a preferred value for a lot of Chemistry 112 calculations. Mole fraction is the number of moles of solute that are present over the total moles. Now, because total moles means you have to consider both uh, solute and solvent, you can kind of think, it as, think of it as the moles of solute over moles of solute plus moles of solvent. Mass percent is very percent, uh, very similar. It's going to be um, the grams of solute over the total grams of the entire solution, which again is solute plus solvent here. Um, I didn't mention mole fraction is represented by the capital X. Mass percent is usually M over M uh, percent, kind of like that. 
but we don't really use that until much later. Now parts per million is probably the most relevant unit for us and that is because every year um, you guys get a packet in the mail from the city that tells you um, how much of different solutes are dissolved in your drinking water. Um, you also find out um, a lot of FDA warnings um, and things like that in parts per million. So parts per million is either going to be ppm, parts per million, or occasionally you'll see units of milligrams per liter. If you think about um, a liter is essentially one kilogram, which is a thousand grams, which has a thousand milligrams in it. Um, one times a thousand times a thousand gives you 10 to the six or a million. Um, one milligram over 10 to the six gives you the number of milligrams in a million. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Now let's go back to um, the molarity unit for a second. Calculate the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 25 grams of NaCl and diluting it to 625 milliliters of solution. Here, because molarity is moles per liter, we need both moles and liters. We actually don't have either of those values. So to get to moles, we're going to go from grams to moles using the molar mass of NaCl. And we're going to go from milliliters to liters using a conversion we did in unit one. Now, since the objective for this video is not to focus on molar mass, um, instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it. But if you need practice, now would be a good time to pull up your periodic table and calculate the molar mass for this. Molar mass of NaCl is 58.44 grams per mole. So to convert, we're going to take our 25 grams of NaCl, and we know every time we have 58.44 grams, we get one mole of NaCl. So dividing in our calculator, we're going to have technically 25 times 1 divided by 58.44, and you should get something like 0 0.428 moles of NaCl. On the other hand, we have 625 milliliters. We know every time we have 1,000 milliliters, we get one liter. Dividing, we're going to get 625 milliliters, uh, excuse me, 0. Point, well, 625 divided by 1,000 gives us 0. 0.625, uh, 0. 0.625 liters of NaCl solution. So now we have moles. We have liters. We can just divide the 4.28 moles by the 0 0.625 liters. And you're going to get the molarity value of 0 0.684 molar NaCl. Now usually, especially for lab, it's just much more beneficial for us in terms of time and safety and storage for us to make a very concentrated solution and then allow you guys to dilute it out um, for each lab that you need that compound. And so for example, um, you can kind of think of this in terms of um, even sweet tea in this area. If you uh, go to Pollard's or um, McDonald's or Hardee's or I don't know, most places around here, the sweet tea is very, very, um, very, very sweet. It's almost syrupy, you could say. And um, one way to handle that is if you don't like it quite that sweet, is you can dilute it down. You could do that either with unsweet tea or water. And a lot of people, you'll see them mix half and half, half sweet tea, half unsweet tea. And it just is a way of diluting it down because you're not adding solute, you're just adding 
solvent or solution that doesn't have that solute in it. And so here we have a very concentrated solution and you can dilute it with a little bit of water or extra water, a lot more water, until you get a very diluted compound over here or a very, very diluted solution. Now for dilution calculations, you have a separate formula that is called M1V1 is equal to M2V2. Here we have molarity, which is moles per liter at one situ situation, multiplied by the volume at that situation, equal to the molarity at a new situation, multiplied by the new volume. And if you look, our liters cancels. And so it really means that moles of solute is gonna stay the same even after you dilute it. And that makes sense um, because you're not adding in any sugar, you're just adding in solvent. Now, if you look at this, how much of a two molar NaOH solution is needed to make 50 mils of a 0.1 molar NaOH solution? Now, our equation is M1V1 is equal to M2V2. If you need to, please pause and try this on your own. We know we're looking for volume of this two molar solution. So we have two molar and we have some volume. And that equals the 0.1 molar um, and the 50 mils. Can we use this 50 mils? It doesn't necessarily cancel here, but let's do the calculation and see what happens. In order to get V by itself, we need to divide both sides by 2.0 molar. The molarity is gonna cancel, this cancels, and you get 50 mils times 0 0.1 divided by 2.0. And so you end up in your calculator getting um, 2.5. Our units are milliliters. So we can actually, for dilution calculations, only worry about using what we're given. If you really wanna to convert to liters, you can do that. You would have had instead 2.0 molarity times V is equal to 0 0.050 liters times 0 0.1 molar. Dividing out, you would have gotten 0 0.0025 liters of solution. Um, technically, for me, it's a time saver not to have to convert. So this is one situation, because it's the only one you really can do, where I take advantage and I don't convert. Oops, there we go. So a student needs to make 250 milliliters of a 0.1 HCl solution, how much of a 4.10 molar solution is needed to make the required solution? Guys, so this is almost straight out of the lab you guys have in a few weeks. You get a concentrated HCl solution. Of, um, actually, it's gonna be an AOH, but same thing. And then you have to dilute it down so that you can perform titrations with it. So again, our formula is M1V1 is equal to M2V2. We know we have 0 0.1 molar times 250 milliliters, and it's gonna be equal to 4.1 molar times some new volume. And I did not put my uh, units here, but that should be milliliters. So to solve, you're going to take and divide both sides by this 4.1, zero molar, that cancels, molar and molar cancels, you're left with 0.1 times 250 divided by 
and you get something like 6.1 milliliters of your uh, HCl solution. So here we have um, our mole concept map. And I have added this right here to your mole concept map. It is one step. And it allows us to convert between liters to moles. Everything else on the mole concept map is staying the same. We are just adding this one step for unit um, four. For, the, for us, we are in the solutions part of this. Ignore the gases for right now, guys. Don't use that yet. For solutions, you can go between liters and moles using molarity because it's moles per liter. Everything else about our stoichiometric calculations is going to remain the same. You need to make a plan. You're going to figure out what your conversion factors need to be, whether it's molar mass or your mole to mole ratios. You need to get those. And then when you do your calculation, set up to cancel your units. And then especially in lab, guys, make sure you're using the right number of sig figs. So here's an example where we have 22.15 milliliters of a 0 0.109 molar NaOH solution that was used to completely react with 10 milliliters of sulfuric acid. What is the molarity of that solution? Well, I really would like you guys to pause and try these. I can't confirm that you're doing that while we're online, but it really helps if you try these on your own. At least think about it. Let's make our plan. Just to get to molarity, because molarity is moles per liter, we can very easily get to moles of H2SO4 using stoichiometry, and then we can just divide by the liters. So let's go back for a second. We're given milliliters of our NaOH. That is not on this mole concept map, but we could add it here. You go between milliliters and liters using that conversion from unit one. You can go from liters to moles using molarity from moles of NaOH to moles of sulfuric acid, you're going to use your mole to mole ratio. So we can do this in a three-step problem. Oops, there we go. So we have milliliters of NaOH, and we're looking for moles of H2SO4. We're going to go from milliliters to liters of NaOH. Then we're going to go to moles of NaOH. We're going to go from liters to moles using molarity. And from there, we can get to moles of H2SO4 using the mole to mole ratio. So we have a three step problem where we have 22.15 milliliters. We can convert this to liters. We know there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. According to the problem, every time we have one liter, we have 0 0.109 moles of NaOH. And according to our balanced equation, every time we react two moles of NaOH, we use one mole of H2SO4. So in our calculator, that was what went flying. We have 22.15 divided by 1,000 times 0 0.109 and divided by 2. And you get something like 0 0.00121 moles of H2SO4. Now, to change this to molarity, all we have to do is divide by liters. We know that we have 10 milliliters. Dividing by 1,000 
gives us 0 0.0100 liters of solution. So we can divide by the liters to get our molarity, and it comes out to being 0 0.121 molar H2SO4. Now, there is also this question of how many grams of H2SO4 are in solution. Well, molar mass was technically a unit 3 concept, so I'm not going to calculate the molar mass of sulfuric acid here, but I'm going to tell you it's 98.06 grams per mole. So if you need to practice, you can go ahead and just double check that my math is right and use that number. We have right here the moles of H2SO4. And we can convert to grams using molar mass. So this is a one-step problem. We have 0 0.00121 moles. I'm going to run out of room, so I'm not going to write H2SO4, even though I should if I was a good girl. We know every time we have one mole, we get 98.06 grams of H2SO4 which is going to give us 0 0.119 grams of H2SO4. Now, guys, technically this is a little bit longer of a question than what I would give on a test because there's one, two, three, technically four steps to find the molarity. I really like to limit it to three or fewer. But if I had given you this in liters instead of milliliters, it would have eliminated the one step, and it would have been a three-step problem, um, especially if I gave you liters of this guy as well. So with that in mind, this is very similar to what you'll see on a test. It's just going to be slightly shorter. I didn't ask you to balance your equation here. All I asked you to do was use stoichiometry to calculate um, the molarity. If you are struggling with this, there are sample questions that you can use that are posted on Blackboard, or you can um, <laughs> also take the, this and change the numbers. Maybe I didn't give you 22.15 mils. Maybe it's 38.6 mils or 104. Um, change the numbers. Go through the math as many times as it takes for you to get comfortable and for it to take you less than two minutes to not only see what the problem is, but how to calculate it. With that in mind, this is the end of our um, video on this section. We will continue in a new